In this video, we're going to take a look at classes. But first, let's take a look at why we need these classes by looking at the problem. At the moment, we have a string animal with a name and a kind inside, and these are separated by a space. Let's say that we want to add a height and an age. Then it would start to look like this. And the only way to get these values out is with this split method. The problem of this split method in combination with the values in a string is that we don't know which way these values are ordered inside the string. Of course, we do know now, but let's say you're building an application and five weeks from now, you would need to see where the age is. Now I can see that it's at place four and I would have to look back then to how I added to the list and then see, oh, it's on place four. And then I have to use the block brackets and use the tree to get the value out. But there's a much simpler way to do this. And there's where classes come in. So what is a class? A class is a custom type, just like string, int, and all like that, in which you can bundle variables, methods, and more. It's fairly simple. We have a class keyword with a name behind it. And this is the name of our class. Then we open and close brackets, and between these brackets, we put the code, the fields, the variables, methods, everything inside that belongs to this class. So in the case of name and kind, we just add string name and string kind. Fairly simple. These two are our fields that resides in this class, and we know that every animal instance, is what we call it, or object, has this name and kind field. You could say that a class is a blueprint of how fields and methods work with each other. How is this going to look like in code? We have instantiating, getting, and setting. So instantiating is creating an object of this blueprint. So we can create multiple objects that use this blueprint. So for our hairy dog, we could say animal hairy dog, this new animal, and we could say for our cat animal, red cat is a new animal, and we could call this a million times, and we could we would create objects of this type, actually. It's a little bit the same as strings. We are whole time creating an object of type string with a certain text inside. So this is only the boundaries of what you can do with this type. To read values out of our animal class, we can use getters. And it's fairly simple. You take the name of the object that you just created, and then we use a dot, and then we can choose the property field variable. These are all the same, actually, that we want to read. So we can say animal.name, and we can use it in the string, string name variable. We could do the same for kind. If we want to set it, it's just the other way around. So we say animal.name is hairy and animal.kind is dog. Let's just put this in code and maybe it gets a little bit more understandable when we use it. So we're back here in our code and I'm going to scroll down below this make some function method. And I'm going to create a class just, just like in the PowerPoint, I'm going to say class animal and I'm going to give in string name and string kind. We are now able to create this animal. So let's do that. Animal. And we can also see if we just type anim, then control space, it's going to say here animal. And then I'm going to call it Harry for now and say new animal. So now I created an object of this class called Harry. If I now type Harry dot, you can see that our properties pop up. So kind and name fields is maybe a better word just to make it less confusing. So I could set this name with name one. And I could set this kind with kind one. And if we now print our hairy object out, so let's take a look why it's, it's, oh, I forgot the one here. And then run, 
then we can see instance of animal. That's why it's in called instantiating. But it's now reading out something of how this class is called. But we can also print out the name that we filled in. So here we set the value and now we're getting our value. Let's run that. And as you can see, it now says Harry. So the way we can use this is instead of using these strings everywhere, we're now actually going to use our animal object. So we're still going to keep these. We're going to delete this for now. And instead of animals add a string, we want to add an animal object. So the first thing I have to do is instead of list string, I'm going to create a list of animal. Now we will get all kinds of errors because we can split a string and we can add a string to our list because our add method now expects an animal object. So let's create this animal object. Animal animal is new animal. And we are going to set these animal.name with the name and animal.kind with the kind. And then we're going to add this animal to our list. So that one is fixed. This line isn't necessary anymore because we can now say animal.kind. That's because when we click here, we can see that this animal is now of type animal and not of type string. So all our errors are fixed now. Let's run our code and see if it's still working. As you can see, it's still working, but it now says instance of animal instead of a name. And we're going to fix that later on in this tutorial by overriding a certain function but for now, let's leave it as it is. So this was a really quick intro into classes. Don't worry if you don't get it at this point. We're going to look at it in many more videos and I will try to explain it as clearly as possible.